Yeah, I know this is late. What's new? But we have got to go through the Murdoch press changing its stance on climate change. It's too funny. Not as funny as I am Sam. I think we all burst out laughing when Sam lost custody of his child, but that's basically what happened here. Ah, uh, Christ, half my act. I gotta come up with a whole new set. It feels like I'm losing a kid, you know? In case you didn't know, the Murdoch press has always thought about climate change the way I thought about Bill Hicks's death. Staged. He just didn't want to take the reputational blow of starring in eight simple rules for dating my teenage daughter. And then he faked his death again so he could write chicken soup for the soul. But this is a perfect summary of Sky News' stance on climate change since forever. Rudd's team put it together. This is an ideological argument that's taken over. It is a complete and utter hoax, and it is designed to change the nature of the economy of the world. And it's an attack on the economic viability of this country. It is a national economic suicide note. There is no climate crisis. We've really got to take a hold of this as government, and we've got to get out there and get on the front foot and tell the truth, because the truth rebuts every single one of these alarmist lies that they carry on. Every single thing they tell you from more fires to more deaths to polar bears drowning, when you look at the evidence and the peer-reviewed science, it tells the exact opposite of what's being peddled, in, ma in many cases, in the mainstream media. Mm. As you can tell, the biggest media conglomerate in the country is very sceptical of the mainstream media. And not sceptical at all of Craig Kelly. How could you be with a face like that? Don't you reckon Craig Kelly looks like an old pig pretending to be a person? That'll do, pig. That will do. Now go over to your friend. <coughs> anyway, <coughs> Sky News could see the con coming from a mile away when each way elbow declared at the beginning of last year that Labor's still going on about this loony left garbage of a net zero target by 2050. Sky's diagnosis, a nice healthy dose of shit down. Greatest policy rubbish being dished up is this business about net zero carbon dioxide emissions. It's such a monumental joke. Now you think about it, he's, pro he's projected what the Australian government policy will be in 30 years from now. Well, let's go back in time 30 years from here. We get to the year 1990. How different was the world then? We had a thing called the Cold War was still going on. We didn't have the internet. A you know, whole lot of other things hadn't happened. We didn't and even have mobile phones. That, good point, thank you. Now, now, so how on earth could a Prime Minister in 1990 come and tell us what's going to happen in the year 2020 when they had no idea what the world's going to be? And you know what? There's going to be the same amount of exciting change over the next 30 years. This whole global warming thing is a total fairy tale. And the fact that they've put it out for 30 years, this is kicking at the can all the way across the nullarbor. The quotes that we are hearing from other countries attempting a similar ridiculous feat are absolutely through the roof, which is why Albanese cannot give us a straight answer. He just keeps telling us jobs won't be slashed, the economy won't be trashed, and power prices won't be sky high. But no. we all know all three of those are absolutely going to happen. There's no plan, there's no costings. These guys have absolutely no idea what they're doing besides virtue signalling. That's right, soy boys. Is you, mate? Sky News, the channel that allows Craig Kelly to say, peer-reviewed studies into climate change show that this graph of temperature increases is actually upside down. Demand that each way Albo show his homework. Oh no, my extreme green agenda laid bare by Chris Smith, the least shit man alive. No, no pie, pie in the sky, sky here. Mm, I bought a pie into the studio once. Fair enough, you gotta have lunch, mate. Anyway, let's uh sum up this already overextended skit with my closing argument. Coal keeps the light shining. Then, our half-wit treasurer Josh Frydenborg comes out a year later pushing for the exact same policy as Labor's, a net zero target by 2050, using the exact same arguments of Labor's shadow climate minister Chris Bowen, saying, We are missing out on global economic opportunities, like I am missing out on the experience of my mind not being linked to the hive. <laughs> this is where it gets nuts. Purely because that policy came out of this mouth instead of this mouth, Murdoch Papers, Sky, <laughs> Crab walking back, 
decades. Denying the size for decades from yeah to yeah. that whole time until a few weeks ago. Here's the big take home about climate change. Greta Thunberg is a teenager. You know how teenagers are. One week they're a goth, the next week they're a bloody emo. This environmentalism thing is a fad, you know. You're going to address any part of her actual argument? Just let me finish, let me finish. She could be an e-girl next week, a sharpie the next. You would think it would take a little longer to undo 40 years of indoctrination than four days. And yet, September 24... The PM said this was always going to be something that was costed. We'd know what it would mean to the Australian economy. Josh Frydenberg is the treasurer. He was pushing it pretty hard today. I haven't seen what it's going to cost. I haven't seen any policy announcement, any sort of detail. Mm. It feels like they're racing towards Glasgow Rowan and we, the consumer, we, the Australian, have been left behind in terms of what's, it's, you know, what's the impact on us? Holy hell. Albo has no details. You can't present them. Carbon neutral by 2050. <laughs> hmm. May I see the details? That's one small step for man. One giant backflip for Peter Credlin. Sweet days later. Does the Morrison government have any choice but to give in and promise to go to net zero emissions by 2050? No, I'm afraid, Andrew, they don't have any choice, which is why they're going to do it for some of the reasons best expounded last week by Josh Frydenberg. At least you can say this about Scott Morrison, that rather than these sort of, you know, bandwagon jumping airheaded leaders from a lot of other countries that, you know, just spout the rhetoric and, you know, of course, they won't be there in 2050, so it doesn't really matter to them. They can say whatever they like as long as it's, you know, happy, makes the public happy. Morrison is going through the whole situation and working out how we're going to get there, what's going to be affected, how many jobs are going to be affected, what it's going to mean internationally, is hydrogen going to be relevant, et cetera, et cetera. He's going through the process and, you know, good on him for doing that, whether you agree with 2050 zero or not, at least he's showing us and then the electorate will have a right to say, you know, they agree with it or not based on the fact that they're going to have some facts put before them for the very first time, Andrew, because no one has actually explained to anyone in this country or anywhere else for that matter what it means for their country and their economy and their jobs. Wow, this just in. Scott Morrison is looking at future energy consumption like every Prime Minister has ever done, and he did it on day one. Thousand. Three years in. And yet he's getting praise from the home of constant bitching about government inefficiency, energy inefficiency, and as recently as three days before, going carbon neutral. And here's the best part. That's only two right angles. They need another one to complete the U-turn, and that happened the next day with Brace Yourselves. This is actually a historical moment. What's your position on whether the federal government needs to go uh, into the aspiration of net zero for 2050? I think we should achieve net zero. I think it is absolutely achievable. I believe as someone who's been a farmer for a great part of my life and represented farmers in Western New South Wales, that uh, it is the direction we need to take. But we do have to bring the community with us. And that's why the Prime Minister's approach has been so sensible. And that's why the debate where you're hearing lots of different views is actually going to get us to the best position that we need to be. Uh, you know, I talk about agriculture and net zero a lot, Paul. I never have constituents ring me the next day to say, I don't agree with you. And when I meet them at uh, any events that uh, I've been lucky enough to go to or out on the road, uh, they accept that it's necessary, but they do want us to take care to do it properly and not to leave any communities behind. Ooh, there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the exact moment that Sky News turned its back on common sense. Never thought I'd cheat a day. Six years, six long years of shitbagging that specific Labor policy, sinking Labor in 2019 on specifically that. As Kevin Rudd points out, splaying it all over their front pages. Oh my God, Labor's gonna cost the economy $60 billion. That's more than this week's lotto. On the f $60 billion, that damn f***ing money. It wasn't. Those are figures that were produced by an economist the mining industry trots out every time Labor announces a climate policy. But hey, I'll give the Telegraph this. They actually did end up correcting that factual inaccuracy that they repeatedly publish over and over throughout the election. After the election, of course, when it turns out, oops, actually, Labor's policy would have made us $2.1 trillion. But only when the Liberals implemented, of course. That's the key right there. 
Just like how the Murdoch press pretends to care about political correctness running amok until someone like me rocks up and says, did you know that it's possible to like Dave Chappelle stand up and want public hospitals and then instantly, YouTube are exposed for misogynist rants. It's because these people don't have beliefs. Everything they say. Carbon neutral by 2050. Just translate that in your head to keeping my job till 2050. Because this is how it works. You know how normal people have values and then they base their beliefs around those values. News Corp bases their beliefs around one man's business model. And when that business model changes, so do their beliefs. I originally bought the Sydney Morning Herald point of Murdoch Press changed its stance because their sponsors were uncomfortable with Murdoch's stance on climate change. Not as uncomfortable as I am being on camera. I just wet myself and I really wish I was back at my computer. Then I thought about it more and realised Murdoch sees advertisers how I see subscribers that write to me Some opinion you stated pissed me off and you never met me before but I'm dumb and narcissistic enough to let you know that I, some gnome looking f am unsubbed. That is like if Office Works says to the Courier Mail, Unshaped. Murdoch doesn't give a shit. He doesn't make his money in papers. His papers aren't worth the paper they're printed on. That's not his business. They're a business expense to his business. Like your business expenses. Um, you want some band stickers to put on street signs? His wealth comes from a myriad of investments in other businesses he either owns or partially owns, including, as Michael West discovered, the biggest energy company on earth. I think that pays a little more dosh than the highly coveted Bingley account. Here's what actually happened. Having in a Prime Minister like Kevin Rudd would have really messed with profits of companies like Genie Energy, and that's what he actually cares about. And when those profits are messed with, that's when he sends in the bowling ball. Oh, you want to be spared, do you? Sorry, mate. I only do tactical strikes. Let me take you back to the golden age of 2007, where to be a reality star, you still had to have some form of talent. The biggest story of the year was that Hamish and Andy bought a greyhound, and easily the best leader of our generation was elected by a tidal wave of youth optimism generated by Rove deciding, yeah, I think we can live with interviewing Pink one less time. Let's get the opposition leader on once. You can laugh. But that single decision changed the destiny of a nation. You can read all the economic analysis you like, but I'll save you the time. Experts agree Kevin Rudd did what no other government on earth did. Freak stuff. He saved us from the global financial crisis. As indisputable as the fact that the band Creed is funny. Ah, oh, yeah, everything's coming up Rudd. Yeah, now that I gave this country a massive head start, guess what, you little shits? That was the entree. Main broadband. What a petite bitch. Open wide. The Kev Jet's coming in for landing. Room for dessert? I'm making Australia one of the top ten countries on earth to invest in renewables. Don't like that? Put yourself in a good mood by looking up stickdeath.com and your free fucking laptop I gave you. Those two acts, broadband, as crucial to the 21st century as rail was to the 19th century. And renewables? coal of the 21st century. So not only was Rudd setting us up to be the world's fuel source for this century, but also like the Southern Hemisphere Silicon Valley. Now f***ing Tahiti has that probably. Oh, Kayla, check out the Wi-Fi in here. Jeez, it's pretty fast. Maybe give that Moshi Monsters game a go in here. But unfortunately, those revolutionary plans were put in the dustbin because they interfered with one man's business interest. And so he made sure that they stayed in opposition until it was inevitable that the entire world was going the way of renewable technology. And then as soon as it suited his shares portfolio. Oh yeah, 2050. And how's this for audacity? Actually arguing. Yeah, we're always for that, always. You really need to understand this. This is a crucial part of Australian history. The 2.1 trillion that they're gloating about now. That would have been peanuts. Kevin Rudd was investing in this stuff while the rest of the world didn't have the money to do it, meaning that we would have had not only a natural advantage because of how big and sunny this country is, but a 15 year head start. That head start was completely ceded to China and Europe because the Liberals and the press have no soul. The Liberals want power for the sake of power and the journalists that get them in there, they just want a f***ing fairly good house in Maroubra. They will trade the entire future of this country for a house in Maroubra, and they did. Which is why Rudd's team is. What's on the menu for today, mate? Mischief, you fucking c They're cooking up madness to mess around with the Murdoch press. Read about it here, but they're basically setting up an organization that will be specifically devoted to constantly attacking the Murdoch press. An endless campaign of attrition. That's all it'll do, undermine its credibility constantly. What a scary thought for Joe Hildebrand. You want to scare Joe to have an even more miserable existence than he already clearly has? Good. Chuck us a couple of bucks on Patreon and click below for the new recipe of madness. Also, like this video if you think pink sucks. 
please share and comment below. Command.